Hello, fellow guitar geeks. Today we're looking at this, what I think could be the best, most accessibly priced metal guitar currently available. The Ibanez GRGR221 PA AQB. Yes, I've memorized it, and now I understand it. I'm, I'm getting to learn these Ibanez numbers. So yes, we do take the mickey when it comes to Ibanez naming their guitars, but I'm starting to get it. And I actually know what this, all those numbers and letters stand for. We'll go into that in a minute because it's possibly interesting. But what's really interesting is the fact that this guitar costs a lot less than it should. Now, this channel is not really known for doing metal stuff, mainly because I'm not a metal player. But maybe I could be because this thing is 249 euros, 249 dollars and around 219 pounds. And that is a ridiculous price for something that is this good. I am not normally this passionate about a guitar, but you are getting so much for your money that I can't help but be absolutely over the top uh, excited about it. It has an Akume body, which is very mahogany-like. It has a maple neck, which is a maple neck. It has a purple heart fretboard with 24 frets and reversed shark tooth inlays. The top is a bound poplar top with a photo finish burl finish. That's not a real burl finish, but at this price, that is absolutely acceptable because we've also got a matching headstock. We've got Ibanez IBZ6 pickups, and these are not active pickups. So they kind of look like it. They're styled to look like active pickups, but they're not, they're passive. And actually they're quite low output, which is why I've got this Rev G4 just pushing the Engel uh, Fireball 25 a little harder because I needed a little bit more output and I feel that these pickups, not a negative point, but if you do need something with high output, then these are not the pickups for you. They do the job, but you know, they, they could be more aggressive. That being said, for the money, can't argue. What haven't I talked about? Oh yeah, mine is one of the first run. So I have this style jack on it, which is the older style inferior jack. And now they come with the new style jack that came on the AZES series, which is far, far superior and less likely to go wrong and cause problems. So if you're getting one of these guitars, check to see which, which output jack it has. Is it this one, which is the original? And not bad, just not as good as the one that they've upgraded. So the, the, the new one from the AZES line. What else? We've got a five-way switch. We've got a master volume and a master tone. With this selection, we've got the humbucker at the bridge. Over there, we've got the humbucker in the neck and everything else does stuff in the middle. It would make sense for me to show you what the guitar sounds like in those different positions. So I'll do that first with the, the, the distortion that I've got. So the G4 through the Fireball 25, uh, which you're hearing through Vintage V30s through the Captor X, by the way. Uh, and then I'll do some clean stuff as well. So uh, we'll start off at the bridge. There is a very wide tonal palette available to you. It sounds rather posh, doesn't it? But I think that's one of the least things you should be thinking about when looking at this guitar. I think this guitar being in the Geo range is aimed at either new players or sort of more intermediate players or someone like me who just doesn't own something with that thin a neck. It's got a super slim Ibanez, famous Ibanez for, for being slim, fast neck. and. I, I don't know if I'm into that kind of that metal music, metal, the metal music that I, I have become more accustomed to in the, in the last year. And this guitar has opened that door for me. And at around 250 euros, as a player that owns more expensive guitars, I wanted something that looked, felt, 
and I guess sounded like this. So this is the perfect guitar for someone who might be more interested in getting a guitar that looks like that and feels like that. The geos we have these days, I believe, are far superior to the geos of the past. I don't know how long Ibanez have been doing this, but I once bought a geo, about 40 euros it cost, and it was from someone's gar garage, and it wasn't very well looked after, but I could see that just from the parts, it wasn't that well put together either. This one is very, very different to that guitar. I'm in drop D right now, and one of the reasons is I think this guitar is perfect for drop tuning because we've got this just here. So pulling that back gives us a bit more tension so the guitar lends itself to being drop tuned. And with the reverse headstock, we've got the extra length over here so we can tighten up those strings, giving us more stability in low tunings. And also, I just think the guitar sounds and feels cool. This is my drop D, um, you know. It's, it's my drop D genting riffing guitar, which you might notice I'm probably not going to play these notes, if I'm honest. We've got 24 frets. I'll do that one for you. Just so you hear it, but you're not going to hear it for the rest of the demo because this isn't the way that I play that guitar. But there are other videos that do that for you on the YouTubes. I play this guitar because it's really fun and it, I don't know. When I play it, I feel good. When I play different guitars, I feel, feel different. So when I play my telly, I feel like I've spent a lot of money on a Telecaster. When I play something big jazzy boxy, I, I tend to play some more jazz chords. On this, this is my down-tuned riff monster, and I love it. Let's talk more about these IBZ pickups, because they are definitely not the best pickups I've ever played. They're somewhat lackluster, they're not that clearly defined, but they are extremely budget pickups. And I believe that if you were to buy this guitar and then you wanted to make an upgrade, this is a perfect modding bass because it's not a bass, it's a guitar. Let's get that out of the way. Because you've got a thick. Oh, hello. And that is the reason why Ibanez have changed this. So I'm gonna have to get in there and fiddle around with that because on these lower priced guitars, the jack socket, hang on, let's mute that. The jack socket is the most likely part to go wrong, which will stop you from playing. Let me just fix that quickly. Um, uh, in fact, I'll show you how to do it. Don't just tighten it up, drill flex. You need to take the, the whole thing out. Don't lose the screws. Take out the thing and then I should be able to turn it. I've got these nifty tools, but you can, there we go. That was just a bit loose. Ah, so that is a criticism, um, but the new ones come with the improved jack socket. So I believe Tomo Fujita has something to do with, the, with that. I'm not sure if he designed them or suggested them or tested them, but I know that he was involved somehow. Anyway, super quick fix, and now it will work perfectly. There we go. Oh. See, no issues, but it shouldn't do it, and the new ones don't. I wish I had the, the new improved version. New and improved. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, modding platform. Uh, it stays in tune wonderfully, like really wonderfully. Like it's got, um, the standard sort of cheap tuners on it and sometimes on the guitars with trem systems They don't do a good enough job of keeping the guitar in tune. Also the nut is cut wonderfully They do a wonderful job of letting the strings run through them without binding them and therefore keeping the guitar in tune So what I'll do is I'll, I promise you some clean tones. 
I'll do something that isn't metal and do some bends just to show you that the guitar will stay in tune. Tune up to standard tuning first. <laughs> That's enough for me to say this guitar stays in tune perfectly. And any guitar, I'll stick my neck out here and give some advice, any guitar at this price point that has a trem system on there will be problematic, will 99% be problematic. If you buy a brand new guitar for around $250, 250 euros, 200 pounds, whatever, um, stick with one that doesn't have a trem system. This is a great opportunity for me to show off and explain what the name means, the GRGR221PAAQB. I'm starting to understand Ibanez names. It's really freaky. Okay, and I've, I didn't Google this, but I did check with Dan that I got it right, and it is right. G stands for Geo. RG, Roadstar Guitar, the RG. R is for Reversed Headstock. Two, because it's part of the 200 series, two because it's got two humbuckers, one because it's got a fixed bridge. If it had a tram style bridge, it would be zero. PA is poplar art because it's a poplar top, but it's art, it's not, it's not actually a burl. And then AQB is aquaburst. Yes. I shouldn't be that happy, I should, but I am. <laughs> So it's a versatile guitar that feels great. I, I can't dis I, I can't explain how comfortable this guitar is. Um, and I'm I'm normally into big thick necks, but with this one being super thin, um, it, it's I either like them super thin or super thick. It's somewhere in the middle that doesn't please me because it's you know it's the it's the middle ground, and I don't like that. I like extremes. Feels good, looks great. Let's talk about the looks for a moment. The black hardware, everything going, just matches this overall metal look. Um, the covered pickups acts to it, the, the, everything. Just look at it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you do like it, you should like it a lot because it really captures what it's trying to capture. I don't think it's cut any corners. Um, we should open it up and have a look inside just to see, you know, check out the wiring. Okay, here we go. Very cool. Check this out. It has, let's just go to the top of the pedal for a moment. Um, it's got marks on there, by the way, because I've been playing it a lot. Apologies, Ibanez. Um, it's got like the, the Ibanez uh, gem fluorescent wiring, which is crazy. Also, we've got some small pots, but wiring looks absolutely clean with fluorescent wires, cables. What a bonus. Um, I guess I should screw it back together, but I'm gonna, oh, it's also shielded on the back, so that helps. Again, it adds to the story that this guitar is wonderful value for money. And if you are thinking of getting a first guitar or you're thinking of buying a first guitar for someone that is into the somewhat heavier music, this, this would be a great choice. Now the guitar is not perfect, but I don't think perfection is what we're looking at at this price point. We're looking for something that's reliable, that is attractive so that you pick it up and play it. It's playable and it sounds good enough. And it does all those things. Does it do anything more? Yeah, it probably makes you look good if, if that's, you know, that's your thing. It's becoming my thing. We've established that the jack socket was a bit of a problem, but Ibanez have already fixed that with the updated models having the new AZES style uh, output jack. That's what that is. And also the pickups, the sound is not the best sound you can get, but for 250 bucks, I would rather that Ibanez spend the money on building a great model guitar and then putting in pickups that sound a little, inferior is the wrong word. What I'm saying is if they spent more money on pickups, the guitar would be more expensive. If the guitar stayed at 250 or whatever price it is in your area, they would have to make something else cheaper. They've made the correct thing cheaper. Yes. Let's take one more look at it because it is, I think it's stunning. It's very different to the guitars that I would normally play, but because it's so out there, I love it. I actually think that burl tops are not cool, but because of the price of this guitar, I think it, I think it is cool. And the fact that it's not a real burl, I think that's a cool thing. It's, I don't know, 
sticking it to the, the burl man. I hate saying the word burl. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is the strap buttons are nice and uh, splayed out. So they do that, meaning that when you put a strap on there, it shouldn't come off with ease. And some of the cheaper priced guitars have strap buttons that are not so splayed out and you can actually drop your guitar. Bottom line of the review is that if you want something that handles drop tuning extremely well, stays in tune, looks pretty cool, and is very, very affordable, then the grgr 221 pa aqb should be one of the guitars you're looking at, if not possibly the only one. And if this doesn't peel your banana and it's a bit too showy, maybe the one, the stealth one, does something for you. I'll put it up on screen now, but that is a very similarly spec'd guitar to this. And uh, you should check that one out as well. I'll put a link to that in the video description, as well as all the rest of the gear that I've used in this video, should you want to purchase something. And that's it, that's the end of the review video. Thank you for sticking with me. Because it's the end, you've made it to the end, therefore, you're in the end of the video club. To prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave me a comment telling me what you thought of the Ibanez grgr 221 pa AQB, please also include the phrase, budget metal. And that'll let me know that you watched this part of the video and we can all have a jolly good giggle. Thank you for doing that. That just leaves me to say thank you to Dan and Meinl and Ibanez for sending this out, for sponsoring the video and for bringing a guitar into my life that I didn't think would ever fit in my life. It's not something that I would normally be attracted to and I've, I love it. Thank you for watching. Videos, subscribe button. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.